This podcast is sponsored by Happy Warrior Kava. Be a happy warrior, drink, relax, and enjoy the strong and smooth taste of the best-selling kava in the islands. Happy Warrior Kava. Aloha and welcome to another edition of H&N Overtime, the Hawaii News Now sports podcast. I am joined in the digital center by Davis Pitner. I'm Kyle Chenin, but we are missing yeah. our girl in the Whoa. middle. Whoa. There's, there's something missing. There's there. someone missing. We <laughs> have uh, our very own Santa Pilatin is enjoying yeah. a much, much well-deserved vacation. So Absolutely. we miss you, C, but we hope you're having fun back home and enjoying yourself. We were holding down the fort for you this week. Do not worry. Um, but... Um, it's just the boys, so who knows what's going to happen. It's just the boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since we've just had a, yeah. a, a boys episode. It's been a minute since yeah. just the boys, but um, yep. it's it's another loaded episode. Um, so I, 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 I really wish Sienna was here to, to join in all the fun. But It's an exciting time. It's an exciting yeah. time towards the tail end of the football season here in the islands. And, and a lot a lot's going on, but we will start um, this past Veterans Day. Um Again, yeah. kind of belated Veterans Day. Thank you to everyone who served our country. But um, the UH football team definitely served the Air Force Academy a hefty loss. I don't think anyone saw that one coming. No. Uh, I mean, we certainly didn't see that one Mm-mm. coming. I totally predicted last week that UH was going to get blown out. I, I mean, I like, think we all did. <laughs> I, I think we all did, seriously. I mean, when you look at a team that um, notoriously had issues stopping the run, um, Throughout the season, going up against the number one rush offense in the country, it, it, it definitely raised a little bit of eyebrows when, yeah. um, you know, UH handed Air Force their first Mountain West Conference loss of the season, dropping them to five and one in the conference. Kind of, it actually kind of helped shake up the top of the conference because now I think um, Air Force, Fresno State, and the UNLV are all tied oh, yeah. right now at the top. So that's going to be interesting. So UH playing a little bit of spoiler to the Air Force um, Academy. But, man, what a game. That was just insane, Kyle. I mean, we were both there, and it was just so crazy to see UH's defense step up to the plate. Oh, yeah. we, we knew going into this that Air Force, they're a run-heavy team. They don't they don't throw the ball at all. No. They're, they're all – Triple all, option, all baby. Run, triple option. That's, that's what they're known for. That is as uh, old school football as you the can get. The running back is highly ranked. I think I said last week he was like top 50 or something Gotta like be. that. Got to be. Uh, and looking at all the previous games before that, UH just couldn't stop the run. No. And this was like, all right, you know, we're, we're all thinking going into this that, you know, UH, uh, they're just going to run all over them, yeah. basically. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of what uh, the talking heads, us being a yeah. talking head, kind of predicted. Um, but, I, 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 I mean, we all watched that game. It, it was crazy to see, like, once the Air Force offense n- knew that they couldn't get a, get their run game going, and when they tried to pass it because they were like, we need to find something that works, the defense – capitalized on that i mean yeah. what four turnovers in the fourth quarter alone Crazy. is insane one of them being by the man in the middle peter manuma the safety um i know i'm what gonna a crazy I'm, game crazy yeah, i know go no, ahead no no no, 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 no. you go you. you go no, ahead you go you have the Kyle, stat you go davis davis <laughs> pitner our our gracious co-host week in and week out prints out all these facts and all this info for us but this is your this you know, is the, let, let me just this say, is Davis it, Pittner's printout. It is, it is something that I actually got from football from high school. Uh, every single week, uh, our coaches would give us printouts, and we had to memorize all the players on mm-hmm. their team. So we had a new, okay. you know, like the defense, yeah. you know, the guys' names, numbers, even sometimes like you know how tall they are. Yeah, or get really into detail. Uh, if you didn't get it all right, you weren't playing the game, no matter how good you are. So. I had it's a sim- something yeah. I picked up. Yeah. yeah, I had a similar thing in college. We'd have to memorize the two deep on, on the defense. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not. I don't think. I don't think. I think it was only the front seven, like the D line and the linebackers. So it wasn't the full defense. And then we'd also have like whatever plays that were scripted that week. We'd have to like write them all out, like on the you know the little printout that has the the center and the defense, and then you have to draw the lines and what you're supposed to do. We had to do that every week, either if it was a home or a road game. On the road game, we'd have to give our coach the oh, the wow. papers on the bus, and yeah. that would kind of determine like if you knew it or not. So 
I, I, I feel it's you important. on that. Yeah. It's definitely important. But we will get – let's let's hear it for Pitner's printout. Well, while we play this, I want to play some B-roll. And first of all, yes. you know, when we start off, how about that flyover? The that was F-22 pretty cool, right? The F-22 flyover was so cool. That was pretty cool. Uh, that if you was, were there, you yeah. would see how uh, – notice how cool that was. But, yes, getting into the stats, uh, you know, first of all, let's just start with Shager. And Ashlock, uh, as you can see right there, Shager, what an amazing game from him. Right. You could just see he was lit up the entire game. It was unreal. 22 for 29, 176 yards and two touchdowns. But what also really made it unique for Shager was his rushing. He led rushing for UH, eight carries, 57 yards and one touchdown. Mm -hmm. He was on fire. It, it was incredible to see this performance by him. And it was it's it's also super refreshing, Davis, that if you look at the numbers, they're not gaudy numbers. Like, I mean, they're not certain, as usual certain, 300. Certain or, games, right, yeah. he needs to kind of be able to throw the ball that much and, like, have 59 attempts. But he was so efficient. Last weekend, I mean, 22 of 29, he only needed to throw the ball 29 times, and they still put up the numbers that they did. And he kept the ball out of the defense's hands. Yep. That's that's just the, that's just that's a sign key. of a of an efficient quarterback. And and I mean, you want to talk about swag, you want to talk about yeah. renewed energy. Talk about him rushing it, um, getting that touchdown on the ground at like the one and a half yard line. Yeah, little. Um, Philadelphia Eagles esque brotherly shove. I've heard, I saw it on Twitter. They were calling it the 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 brotherly shove. <laughs> the brotherly shove. <laughs> That's so good. The brotherly shove, and he's like flexing to the camera. I saw the spectrum feed because oh, yeah. I was on the other end of the end zone, so I didn't necessarily get to see the celly. I just saw the scrum. But like, dude, flexing at the camera. Yeah. Are you that was kidding crazy. me? No, that was crazy. He was so fired up. So and it fired was, up. That's like what you want to see from a quarterback, too, because that just energizes the team. I oh, mean, yeah. you see him getting going. Everyone is going to start yeah. getting going. The defense is going to be, you know, fired up, too. Shager led this team. You know, he yeah. really, you know, not only got the offense going, but he kind of gave that energy to the defense to also step up. And what led all those turnovers, too. I mean, it was really, really incredible. Uh, I mean, Ashlock, too. What a game for him. 12 receptions, 67 yards, and two touchdowns from Shager. I mean, that, everyone had a performance right. out there. And it just talks to, the, again, the efficiency. They were able to go down the field kind of at will, right? I mean, their first opening drive touchdown of the season, it's it's something that I think UH fans were dying to see all season long. And, I mean, unfortunately, it took them the third to last game of the year. But, shoot, <laughs> it, it, just, it just gives them – all the momentum going into the off season. I mean, this is the the touchdown, the the broadly shove that you sh that that you just saw right now. But it, it it was it was crazy to see. And I mean, Peter on defense, man, he's always been kind of that leader that was at the unreal. safety position, kind of the young guy, sophomore, kind of growing into his own. But Davis, I mean, his numbers were great. He was flying everywhere. If you were looking at the game, you saw number one everywhere, on every single play. Mm -hmm. Seven tackles. Five assists, one interception. Uh, he was everywhere, and he shut that Air Force defense or offense. Sorry about that, offense down. Oh yeah, he was, was able to contain that run. It, it. I think. I mean, me and Sienna were on the sidelines pretty much the entire game, and I think we we were almost kind of in disbelief. We were just like, wait a minute, we're up, yeah. and we've gotten. I the think everyone was yeah, to like was three weird. and outs, like. We're like, whoa, what? Oh, hold on. Yeah. But no, it was great. And, and, and right, it it's just goes to show. But um, what a performance. And I think it's going to carry Crazy. over into the next week. But um, some, some numbers guy, I know you're a big numbers guy. Um, I'll let you take the big one. But here's, I mean, Shager has been great all season long, despite yeah. a couple bad performances here and there this season. But he is ranked 11th in the nation p passing. I mean, top 25 in the country when it when, when you come to passing yards. I mean, that's what you kind of want out of a Hawaii quarterback. Oh, when totally. you hearken back to the run and shoot days, when you go, um, you know, Colt Brennan, Timmy Chang, um, Shevin Cordero when he was here and, and um, Cole McDonald, those guys, you know, just that's what you want to see out of your UH quarterback. Yeah, it's exactly what you want to see. And I think it's something that we were really hoping for this year. Last year was kind of a weird situation in the beginning, as we all know, uh, where we didn't really know who our starting quarterback little was. QB battle little, at the beginning of the year. QB battle. And it's it's nice to see, you know, once we had, you know, we we had Shager down. 
They went with him, uh, and it's been so fantastic to see how he has grown throughout the season. Yep. Uh, he has just gotten better and better. I mean, he's been almost in the top 10 uh, in the all, FBS. Yeah, all year. All year, which has been unreal because you look at other top college teams, and yeah. then, you know, here's Hawaii, uh, the standout quarterback, who's just doing a phenomenal job. Uh, one thing that I do want to shout out. Give it uh, to because us. Because of the stats. Give it to this us. This is a huge one. Give it to uh, us. Braden Shager, he needs 93 more passing yards to reach 6,000 yards in his career. That will be the seventh UH quarterback of all time to reach that mark. He is currently eighth all time with 39 career touchdown or pass, touchdown passes. So, I mean, statistically, he'll be like, going down as one of the better quarterbacks in UH history. Um, and I mean, 93 yards. If if they have a <laughs> if they have a solid performance give next it, week, give it to Ashlock. That's another <laughs> one. That's another game. That's that that's another record-setting year for for Shager. Um, shoot, and I think all the moment, momentum is currently in UH's favor as they head to a so, place yeah. that they've kind of been 50-50 at when they go and play. Yeah. Um, I say, why not? Why not talk about Wyoming? There, right? <laughs> there it is. Boom. There we go. Why not I was Wyoming? Holding, I was holding on to that one. I, I was ready for that. I saw that one cooking. <laughs> but, yes, we are talking about UH's upcoming road trip to Wyoming, Laramie, Wyoming, up yep. into the mountains. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's in Wyoming. Do they have mountains? Do you, you ever yeah, see I those? I really don't know. You know those? Like, the what? you ever see those internet memes where it's just like Wyoming's not a real place. <laughs> it's just Montana. It's just Montana. Yeah, I can see that. I've never been to Wyoming. Me neither. But nothing really stands out whenever I think of Wyoming. Only person like, that I think of Wyoming is uh, two things. Well, I mean, I don't know if you watch this. I don't, but I know that the show that's super popular takes place in Wyoming, but Yellowstone. Oh yeah. But. I everyone's uh, talking about Yellowstone. I, I've never I watched not, it. I've not started Yellowstone. Sorry, yet. guys. Sorry. Yeah. Does Tim, our editor Tim, does he watch Yellowstone? I don't know. I think I've he's heard a, him mention he's, it before. He's our he's our resident TV and movie watcher. He is. Yes. So yep. I, I I don't know that. And Lynn Kawano watches a lot of shows too. But, That's true. Um, we we'll have to do some research. Maybe we we'll have, have to, to watch re- Yellowstone. I don't know, but then also to Josh Allen. That's the only other like yeah, significant Wyoming yeah, yeah, yeah. person or figure. We're that just upsetting all the Wyoming people who are possibly watching this this episode. If you're listening from all the way in Laramie, we apologize. <laughs> We're a bunch of just Hawaii boys. We don't know much, but yep, basically, um, it, it's going to be a tough one regardless. They got to go into Wyoming. And they're at, up in I think. Either one of either the highest or one of the highest altitudes in the conference. I think Colorado yep. Springs Air Force is the highest altitude in the conference, but yeah. Wyoming will be the highest altitude we played in this season, I believe. Um, Which is always going to affect you. Absolutely, yeah. but I mean, history has shown that we've gone up to Laramie and you know put out good kind of upset wins in the last couple seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, Harken back two years ago, a couple years ago, but. Um, the, the the Cowboys are at six and four right now, um, and they currently lead the series sixteen to eleven. So they have a couple games on us, but it's it's a fairly you know even all time series when you think about it. Um, th- there you see just kind of the environment that they're going to be playing in on on a Saturday. It is going to be an early one, nine a.m. Hawaii time kickoff um, for this game. But I mean, it's probably going to be chilly too, dude. Might be a little chilly out there. A bit chilly. A bit chilly. But this team, you know, six and four. Uh, you know, looking at all the stats, it's looking at it. It's similar to last week. It really is. It's similar to Air Force. Not quite the numbers, but it's all that running game. I mean, they yep. have a dual threat quarterback, Andrew Peasley. Uh, he is ranked 103 in the FBS with 1,339 yards. Uh, what makes him, though, is his rushing attack, yep. too. So last game against UNLV, he had 144 yards passing, one interception. But then he also had 14 carries for 69, 69 yards and one touchdown. Uh, their running back, Harrison Wiley, is ranked 58 in the nation in the FBS with 715 rushing yards. Listing off all the stats for you right there. There it is. Uh, but once again, Kyle... Another rushing team. I think if the momentum can hold of what they've been building these last two games, I mean, they had a good performance at Nevada. They yep. ha- they upset 
the Air Force Academy this past weekend, if they can keep playing the way that they've been playing, man, oh man, I think this season is going to end on a very positive note. And this is, so this is another this is another trophy game. Um, not a lot of people might have realized, but last week against Air Force, they were playing for the Cooter Trophy, um, named after a general, uh, I believe, who has ties, obviously, to the Air Force Academy, but also here in Hawaii and our connection to the U.S. military. But this week, we are playing for the Paniolo Trophy, um, and it is, a, you know, it's, it's a term, you know, Paniolo, Hawaiian yeah. cowboy, Yep. Um, just kind of the, the connection between the cowboy culture in Wyoming and here in the islands, so it's a cool trophy. It's like... I, I'm sure you've seen it. It has like the the cowboy trying to lasso. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. So That's it's it's, cool. it's 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 another trophy game for them, which always gives them a little bit of an edge to to you know out outkick their coverage, outperform kind of what the the stats are saying or what what the 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 uh, talking heads are saying. So it, it's going to be an interesting one and one that I'm really excited to see how they how they respond after two positive weeks of uh, play. I think what also gives uh, maybe a lot of UH fans some hope, too, is just seeing how the defense was able to stop the run mm -hmm. for Air Force. Yep. And since we're going against a team this week, uh, Wyoming, which seems to be a very rush-heavy offense, yeah. maybe it, it, it kind of feels good knowing that they have an idea of how to stop the run, you right. know, how to stop a dual-threat quarterback. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully they can take what they – learn what they did uh mm. with air force and are able to use that for wyoming this week so absolutely i uh, think oh no sorry no I'm, no i, was, I just go, got, go for it no no no, no. i mean yeah, geez, uh geez i i i just, I just kind of had a brain fart i i don't know what my thought was gonna be sorry davis no you're good so i mean it's like i don't know we're we're just gonna have to wait and see because yeah. i mean you never really know with UH, especially which, yeah, especially yeah, this team. Like, you kind of never know which team is going to show up. We can say that you know they're going to win one week, yep. and then maybe they'll and they end up losing. I mean, right. last week we totally thought they were going to lose. Yeah, here we are with a major upset. Uh huh. Uh, I can't predict anymore. Me neither. I like sometimes I, I don't know what I'm talking ex about. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. I will say though, the higher altitude will be kind of a. I mean, shout out to the special teams. You guys are the yes. special, the specialists. That's why you guys' team's name is special. Real MVP. I mean, the altitude, the balls are going to be launched, even for the pass game. So, yep. I think with the higher altitude, it could be kind of cool to see if this uh, offense, if Shager wants to unload a little bit. I will say, I asked him after the game. It was a side tangent. So this is the yeah. first first night or first game I've seen him. He has like the the shooter sleeve on. The oh little, yeah, I like little, that. The, that was, the little that was uh, Kobe good. Bryant. Um, little shooter sleeve on i'm like yo new swag new yeah. new look and he's like yeah you know give us some new energy so if he can bring that swag that he brought these last two weeks to laramie they're gonna be riding off into the yeah. sunset with that paniolo trophy and you know all eyes are gonna be on him for wyoming because mm -hmm. i mean shager being ranked 11th in the nation mm -hmm. he's kind of like our guy the, yep. the main threat for them so you already know that wyoming's planning for them uh probably planning for that passing attack but absolutely I mean, after seeing this last performance rushing wise by Shager, that was really, really impressive. So yeah. you gotta be careful of that too if you're Wyoming. Uh-huh. Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, staying on the gridiron, we're going to be back here in the islands. It is okay. the playoffs, Ooh, the HHSA the State Football Championship. Yep. We got three divisions. We got three co-head trophies on the line. Man, it is, is my is favorite time of the year. It's all about for those of us who have played football. Yep. This is what it comes down to. This is what you work on. It's definitely something the that entire year. Yeah, you, you just dream of it. Yeah, you really do. Um, Nothing like Friday Night Lights. Definitely not. And I mean, when when a team, I mean, we've been hyping up UH football, but just in the grand scheme of things, when when the college team or the pro team in your city isn't necessarily the hottest ticket, high school football you kind go of to high school. I yeah. mean, we got some competitive matchups. Um, we have the D two, the D one, and the Open semifinals. We have some graphics made up for you. Want to show that real quick? This is the D two. 
um, semifinal bracket, there you see number one reigning champion Waimea taking on the fourth seed Roosevelt Rough Riders, the OIA champions. And then on the other side, you have Kamehameha Maui taking on pack five. So these are all actually the respective champions in their division. You have the D2 OIA champion in Roosevelt. You have the ILH D2 champion in pack five. You have the MIL D2 champion in uh, the Warriors of Maui, and then you have men the Menehune taking that top seed as the reigning champs and the KIF champion. So this is going to be an interesting one, Davis. Um, as far as the Outer Island teams, they are very run heavy. So I know okay. we've been kind of talking about um, being able to stop the run. I, uh, same goes for the Roosevelt Rough Riders and the Pac-5 Wolf Pack. Um, and Roosevelt, they they boast a dual threat quarterback, a young guy, um, in Iowane Kamanao, who has been kind of willing their way in through this playoff. So it's going to be interesting to see these match up. Uh, I I do kind of see Waimea going for that repeat. They're just very strong up front when it comes to the run and the defense. So it, it's it's just interesting to see just kind of how it's been shaking out. Um, I always like seeing these outer island matchups right. too. Because a lot, I mean, a lot of the focus is always on the main mm -hmm. ones, you know, mm -hmm. here on Oahu. But it's good to highlight, you know, a lot of these outer island teams and what they're doing. And I mean, Waimea being especially a good yeah. team. And uh, you know, I, this is totally side topic, but you know, Roosevelt's logo always oh, yeah. gets me every single time. Oh, the the Rough Rider. The Rough Rider, yeah. The good old Teddy it. Roosevelt. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> I will say though. Um, I've been able to go out to Maui, um, obviously to help coverage of the um, the events going on in Lahaina. But I also had some time to cover some sports out there, mm -hmm. um, as far as football and, and and girls volleyball. But I got to go to a Kamehameha Maui um, game. They played Maui High, and yeah, they run 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 first. But they definitely have tried to sprinkle in that pass. So something that I think is kind of the evolution of these Outer Island teams. Because, I mean, last year, the D2 and D1 champions are both from the Outer Island. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see, Davis. Um, oh, excuse me. I have to catch my breath there, oh, there a little bit. Go. I'm too hyped. <laughs> I'm too hyped. I also had um, my mom's uh, little pasta dish had leftovers oh, for lunch. So nice. it's really tasty, but it does give me a little bit of the heartburn. So, you know, oh, okay. you know how it is. Um, Don't die on me, Kyle. I won't. Trust me. I'm I'm still ticking. I'm right here. Quite I mean good. I mean maybe maybe by the end of this it'll just be a solo show. But I know. <laughs> and we just uh, queue up the solo frame for There you me, go, the right? one shot. The one shot. Um but speaking of one, we'll go to the division one oh, bracket. There it is. <laughs> oh I needed one today. Davis got me with the I was with waiting the for it. I was I'm like, is he gonna do it like in our in our like fun section at the end or is I was I was just Slowly okay, trickling right. down the I field. Like I like it. Hit and us I with that strike. Division One, Kyle. Yeah. Let's so go. in the Division One, we have the reigning champs Konawina taking on Kapa'a of Kauai, and then on the other side, it's all OIA, all Oahu. It's another go around with Waipahu and Farrington. Ooh. Now, you've seen some some of Waipahu and Farrington kind of throughout this yeah. season, especially with the Oahu teams, and I think one thing that stands out for Farrington is their run game. I would say so too. I mean, they have some good passing too, but that run game. I mean, I mean, I've been to you know a game or two yeah. from them, and it it's pretty phenomenal on what they can do on the ground. It's, and it's really crazy to see that they're six. Like, I mean, Rick the sixty eight. I, I would have really expected them to be higher. It's it, it's it's also yeah. It's funny how you how how it all kind of shapes out, especially because like. Um, the right side of the bracket, that was the OIA championship mm -hmm. two weeks ago. So, I mean, when it comes to seeding, especially for the OIA, you have two representatives. You can either get a higher seed if you win the championship, or you could get dropped all the way down to the six just for being runner-up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then you got Kapa'a, who is uh, uh, kind of similar to an Air Force when it comes to their offensive attack. But they have these monsters up front, these offensive linemen. And, like, I, I don't know what's in the water down in Kapa'a on Kauai, <laughs> but they produce linemen. They have some big Ooh. boys up front, so that'll present a challenge to the Wildcats. The Wildcats, they love to air it out. They are the reigning champs, and they've kind of been on a roll. I got to see them earlier this season when they came to Oahu to play Lelehua. Um, and, 
I mean, they, they kind of handed it to the mules uh, a little bit there through the air. So this is going to be an interesting one. But we will move on to the OI Open division. There it is. These are kind of the four teams we saw yep. going into the season. Um, Davis, you were at that Mililani Kohuku OI championship game. And, man... These I, I it's hard to it's hard to not see these two going at it again, but this time for a state title, right? Yeah, it, it's I mean it's really wild. I mean they, these are the games that you know I've I've been at and uh, you know being at that Milwaukee Kahuku game, uh, and I know you were there. That was absolutely wild. I know I was so it was held at <laughs> Farrington, but I'm pretty sure it looked exactly like kahuku where the entire stadium was covered in red absolutely uh, the amount of i mean almost like uh in a way mm -hmm. going against air force we all thought everyone thought that kahuku was going to win i mean you have a team that beats saint john bosco yep. uh and it's kind of like any other team in your path is you know kind of nothing so, right 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 yeah, i mean it's it it was something that no one saw coming but Milwaukee. I mean, Kenny McMillan, right? Kenny. Kenny has been. Kenny was un outstanding. Real. He won that game for Milwaukee, uh, in my opinion. I mean, dual threat quarterback. I mean, he he was known for his passing coming into this game. His rushing though was something that Kahuku did not expect. It's 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 really cool to see because I I mean I obviously. I'm an alumni of this yeah, high school. There, I knew you were going to say that. I, I mean, yeah. I had to Kyle, bring it Kyle up a little Chittin, bit. But proud, proud alum proud of alum. Milwani. But uh, some of the guys that I was saying were just saying, you know, he has all the attributes. He has all the variables. It's just one of those things of that maturity level. I mean, he's only a junior. So he was making appearances yeah. in, this, in the OA championship and the, and the state tournament and just putting up good numbers as a freshman and sophomore. So they were just like the, the, the maturation of this kid. If once he once that clicks for him, I think this is the product that you see of just a complete baller. Yeah, um, I'm and, excited to see. I mean, senior year next year for yeah. him. I'm excited to see what offers he gets. It's gonna I be. Mean, if it's he gonna keeps be wild. this up. Sky's the limit for him. And, and again, I, I keep hearkening back to to the defense. I mean, when you can when you can kind of keep um, a Kahuku offense, especially the run attack. We keep bringing yeah. up the run. I think it's a kind of a theme where we have a yeah, lot I of know. these teams what? that are just run heavy this That's week. That's such like a Hawaii thing, though. I it mean, is. you got the big, big offensive yep. lineman. You got a big running back. Yep. You know, that just hammer it through. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's basically a lot of these Hawaii offenses. Right, and it's old school. It's hand in the dirt smash football, smash mouth football, smash mouth yep. football, and you know credit where credit is due for this Milani offense to make Kahuku one dimensional. And when they tried to throw it, you know, same same with UH. Make them one dimensional and do something that gets them uncomfortable as far as like passing goes. It it it, it results in in what we saw, and and I have a I have a good feeling, you know, not to discount Punaho or um, Campbell, but you know Milani beat Campbell earlier this season. Mm -hmm. um, they have a young guy at quarterback, too, who's able to throw it. But with this defense, I think that they can shut down the Sabres. Same goes with Kahuku. They're going to be playing kind of mad. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of on a warpath now when it comes to getting a little oh, bit of yeah. redemption. Um, so I, I, I think I, I hope Punaho is kind of ready for the that Red Sea attack. Yeah. I, I hope they're ready, too. I think – yeah, I think this is a, a it was a bitter taste for Kahuku. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think they have Milwani still in their minds. So Yeah, they do. I have I have, <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be another Milwani uh Kahuku matchup or at least I'm kind of hoping for one cuz that would be an amazing game. Can you imagine the that atmosphere? Is, so right oh now my God. it's going to be the state championship game will be on Black Friday at the Clarence T. C. Ching Athletics Complex. Yep. Can you imagine, dude? No, let me let me just ask if if that game happens, are you gonna be wearing your Milwaukee gear out I there? I can't. I can't. I Why? have to be Why, impartial. Kyle? I'm a reporter. I'm Kyle, I am this a is sports your, this is your I team, am a though. sports reporter. <laughs> I can't I, I cannot take favorites. I can only <laughs> comment on on this on the sport and <laughs> I can only wish the best for both teams, obviously, because that makes for the greatest of matchups. Um, but I 
truth be told, actually, I don't really have like polo shirts that have Milani on them. Okay. All right. And then, you know, the dress code here got to be in the collared shirt, got to yeah. look fa- like fancy, presentable. All right. All right, Kyle. But um, I, will, I, I will say, I don't know if this has been said on the podcast, but um, I mean, the last time Milani won a state championship was, um, I believe, 20. They they had one when they when they kind of started realigning into the open D one and D two, but mm-hmm. the last um, kind of major championship, at least that I was a part of, was the twenty fourteen team. And little side note, this has nothing to do with the game, yep. but there was a connection between me and another H and N employee at the time. Okay, I, I want you to take a guess at to as to who would have been on the Mililani sideline with me, unbeknownst to me at the time. Are you talking about a person on your team? No, 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 no. A person that just happened to be on the sideline cheering us on. Cheering you guys on? Yes. I don't know, Kyle. So through a series of random just encounters and just happens to be Dylan and Chetta, the I, okay. host of was, This Is Now, I was, gonna actually was say. the Trojan mascot on the sideline in yeah. 2014 as I won, as we won. D- Dylan got is part of this championship, too, when we got our state championship. You want to know why I was about to say that? Was when we were doing our Aloha Stadium farewell special, uh-huh. we had that video of That's Dylan right. cheerleading. That's uh, right. That is why I was about to say I wasn't quite sure at first. I was about to say that because I remember that video. Shout out to Dylan. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, it, that was it, crazy. It's so funny how we brought it up, too, because he asked me when I first started. He was like, when did you graduate Milani? And I'm like, oh, 20, uh, 2016, 2015, you yeah, know, 15, yeah. 16. For sure. And he goes, oh, did you play football all four years? I'm like, yeah. He's like. Oh, I was definitely on the sideline when you won a state title. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> and so he showed me the pictures. And I, I swear that costume has been around since 1973 when the school opened. It's literally <laughs> like the, the armor and the helmet. Yeah, yeah. And like the, you know, the, like the, the, the skirt or whatever that the Trojan like warriors <laughs> wore and like the, the shin guards. And, and he had like the, the flag. It, it, it blew my mind. My gosh. Hopefully, hey, if 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 uh, Milani wins, we'll both be in. You'll both be in, in, in <laughs> studio. <laughs> Well, it is time for yes. the fun section of our show, and yes. like many episodes, uh, Kyle, we have some fun bits, but yep. one in particular, we have a reoccurring uh, segment. that is a reoccurring segment, yeah. and one near and dear to Sienna Pilton. Unfortunately, she is on vacation, to, and she will not be a part of this segment. <laughs> I think this is the expression Sienna would be giving right now. So for, happy yeah, that we're talking so about happy. this. happy. <laughs> Sienna, if you're watching, that's because we are talking about the one, the, the only, only, your favorite, T Swift. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift in the house. There she is. Travis Kelsey's girlfriend. <sighs> it is confirmed. It is confirmed that yep. you see them sharing a kiss during her um, concert in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Yep. I. Uh, what a crazy, you what know. What a crazy. Look, look at how Travis, she just runs over yeah, to she her. She just runs over. Uh, we're going to go into a picture now uh, of T Swift. There uh, she is the with Chiefs. Brittany Mahomes. You know what I am impressed? How dedicated they are to each other. I mean, Travis Kelsey, you're, you're in season for football. Granted, yeah. it was a bye week. Uh, but traveling all the way to Argentina yeah. for this, like. I mean, that's that, that is dedication. I right think. There. I mean, you, you call it what you want. PR, um, you know, like just a, a set up couple for the media. But I mean, the, look at just look at the way she runs over yeah. to him, and he's just kind of waiting there like a gentleman. That's, I mean, man, man, oh man. Act. I want to talk about power couples. If you've seen uh, in other um, videos or photos as well, Travis Kelsey was there with Taylor Swift's dad, dad. Uh, also during that performance. 
Uh, Taylor Swift got the crowd going when she was singing her song Karma Uh and altered (laughs) the (laughs) lyrics saying Karma is the guy on the Chiefs coming straight home to me. I saw so that video saying. blow up yep. online yep. and there's yep. a bunch of reaction. Obviously the crowd went nuts, but then you have the angle of Travis's reaction and he was just like blushing. He had no idea. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's, I mean, Hey, I, I, Sienna's literally not here to defend, yeah. defend this, but this is, this is, <laughs> Sienna hates us right now. Sienna <laughs> is punching the air right now. <laughs> But we love her, and we know she's having a yeah. great vacation. Probably not after she listens and watches this, but we had to throw this in there, you know. Yeah, it, and I was so I was listening to the Kelsey Brothers podcast today, um, oh, New it, New Heights. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was kind of breaking it down too about that that, and he was like, he didn't really know if she was gonna say that, but when she did, the crowd went nuts, um, and. Obviously, the the Swift family is from Philadelphia. If you know your Taylor Swift history, which I actually didn't, I'm happy you. Uh, so they they they've been so before the whole Travis Kelsey scenario, Taylor Swift has kind of been a diehard Philadelphia Eagles fan, which mm-hmm. is where Jason Kelsey, Travis's brother, yes, plays. Yeah. Um, and um, the video with Travis and Mr. Swift, the uh, Taylor's dad, he's wearing a Chiefs lanyard. So they were kind of like, whoa, what happened yep. to the to the fandom? And Travis like, oh, we're, we're converting them to the good guys. Wow. Um, <laughs> but what I did hear on the, on the podcast as well, it so Taylor Swift's dad was actually a football player and played collegiately. He was a linebacker slash offensive lineman. And he uh, apparently, according to Travis Kelsey, he played one year at Hawaii. Played one yeah. year in Hawaii? Yeah. I don't what? know how accurate that is, but I mean, Travis Kelsey said is it on that? his podcast. Wow, that's actually true. Yeah, wow, he played that. He played one year for Hawaii, and then I think the rest of his time playing college football was at Delaware. You know, Kyle, that's a Hawaii connection. That right is there. a Hawaii I connection. Think that deserves a sports report. That from it, Kyle there Chanel. it is. Put it in. Hey, producers, that is first at four. <laughs> I tried Googling it, but I was like, I don't know. All the reports that I've seen is like Travis Kelsey said this on his podcast. Mm-hmm. Like that's who they're accrediting. So nothing actually. I, like... I, was, I was trying to look at UH's website, but their database does not go far back enough to where I Dang. think it would make sense. Okay. So we we will we will next week when Sienna's back, we will Do bring this back up. Sports investigative reporting. H and N investigates H- sports <laughs> edition. Sports edition. Oh my goodness! That is but, so good. But hey, let let the lovebirds sing. I I think so too. And I mean, football wise, uh, the Chiefs do play the Eagles this weekend, mm-hmm. and that's going to be an interesting one, the Kelsey Bowl. But I mean, the I Kelsey think, Bowl. I think it's a repeat. I think Taylor is still on her international tour, right? So I don't think she'll be there. I don't know. You think she could take a quick break? I don't or? know, man. She's a mega star, and she's got to go like you know place to place. Yeah, that's true. Because like I think it was only realistic for like. Travis to meet her somewhere mm-hmm. instead of her, you know, because I mean, like, I, there, I think yeah. Travis Kelsey, he's 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 a big like football star. But I mean, he probably flew private. But I mean, like, as far as like getting on an airplane, going through an airport, he can yeah. probably do that like by himself. Taylor Swift needs the whole oh, security yeah. detail, yeah. the entourage, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like there's kind of different levels to it. But hey, what can we do? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the NFL, though, we will shift gears to another Hawaii connection in the NFL. That was a smooth transition. Thank Kyle. you. I was wondering Thank how we were going to get to like that next section. Thank you. That was pretty good. We're on one right now. See, this is what happens it's when we record different. at our normal time yeah. and not at eight in the morning like yeah, the last week. <laughs> the last one, I was looking back and like, wow, we were like, we we're still, we asleep. were really tired. <laughs> we should have done it like over Zoom with us still in bed, just. Yeah. Tucked in, <laughs> just tucked in. It still would have been. It would have been like a half hour. Almost like the volleyball asleep. tournament, where with you on the couch. Oh, me on the couch, just yeah. lounging. <laughs> oh man, but yes, we will stay in the NFL and okay. talk a little bit of Tua Tango Vailoa. Obviously, he's having a very good season with the Miami Dolphins. They're he having is. a very tur- good turnaround season. Very happy Him staying with healthy. My fantasy team as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, for anyone that is interested, Davis, tell us the name of your fantasy team. 
Oh, it's yeah. uh, sorry, I forgot about. It yeah. took me a second. Sorry, it's, the work uh, league that we're in. Tua B or not Tua B. That is a good one. That's a good one, right? That's a good shout one. Shout out Tua if you're watching. Shout out. Definitely watching. But also shout out for his brand new look. Kyle? There it is. Are you, are you ready for it? I I don't know. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Courtesy of our NBC6 uh affiliate out there. He's rocking the cornrows. The cornrows <laughs> as you can see. Uh, if you see the video, Tua is very happy uh, with his new look. I was watching the press conference yeah. this week, and he was saying that his wife actually likes it. This I mean, was a decision that I guess they're both fine with. It's a, it's very much like a, a South Beach, Florida, Miami vibe. When you when you go out there, you come back with cornrows. But, I mean, I'm just kind of surprised that he had enough hair to do it. Yeah. Because, I mean, he didn't really he, have the he longest He said hair. in the press conference that his hair was just getting long and he just wanted a, a new cut. And I mean, new cut, new man. He's going to be real confident this week. Watch him watch him go yeah. off. I, I could see it. I mean, as long as the wife is happy with it, I mean, that's that's really all that matters. Happy too. wife, happy life. Happy you know? wife, happy life. Yep. And, you know, this, these, these, this look for Tua got me thinking, Davis. Kyle, what are you thinking? What? is one of maybe your favorite or maybe most regrettable haircuts or hairstyles that you've had in your lifetime mr pitner well you know kyle i i'm sure it was like kind of like that maybe for you but uh you know i played football all my life Mm -hmm. and uh you know you gotta have that football cut that's true um so my hair was always kind of short uh-huh um but I always like I always like to style it, and I still have a little bit, but I you like having style. a miniature kind of like a miniature faux hawk, in like a, a way. little faux hawk, like action? a miniature yeah. one, like just at the front. I like to mess it up. Um, I if I remember right, one year for football though, um, I went to uh, a a shop. I'm not going to disclose the name, but okay, uh, I went to a <laughs> shop and. Uh, I think the stylist cut my hair a little bit too short. Oh no, a and little so buzz cut. It was more than it, it turned started turning more into like a mohawk in a way, oh. like, where the sides were really kind of short, yeah, shorter than normal. Yeah, and then she left like uh, the the middle part like a oh, little bit no. too long. Uh, it. It did not look good. I think it was one of those scenarios, if I remember right, I had like a hat on, like, yeah. you know, kind of like yeah. the hat of shame. Yep. Uh, you're like, you don't want to see people, you know, you don't want people to see, you know, your you had your, your hoodie haircut, up a lot, you know, yeah, a little, little hoodie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say that. But other than that, it, it's always been short. But that one time, nice and clean. Uh, yeah, you gotta really trust the stylist. Yeah, I mean, I, I won't disclose anyone here on island, but I've had mm. the same hairstylist or barber since i was in middle school wow i've had the same 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 lady yeah she's awesome she keeps it nice and tight hair's Um, not bad thank you should end looking great everyone thank you davis it's you caught me in a good week when (laughs) when the okinaw inside of me doesn't decide to just make my hair all long and frizzy (laughs) but i mean for myself i will say and when 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 this episode comes out i'll put up pictures I will do that for for my examples. Okay. Yes. If you can find the mohawk, though, I'll try and look for it, but I'm not entirely. All right. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it, the way you described it, it didn't sound like you're taking a lot of pictures. Not not too many pictures, and seriously, my hair was like always short. Yeah. Uh, like it it literally was like the same thing all throughout high school and like college and all. Yeah. That. A nice little clean cut. You're cut. very professional, Davis. What am I talking about? Our coaches were very strict on how we looked. Really? Yeah. You guys played for the Yankees? Yeah, it almost felt like it. We all had to kind of be matching a really? little bit. Really? Yeah, everyone, you couldn't really have that, you know, not not long of hair. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, you got to be clean cut, especially right. in college. You got to yeah. be clean cut. Not really, you know, big beards or whatnot. Dang, um, I did not know that about your school. Yeah, it 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 was very. I mean, I I liked it. I mean, yeah. it, it made us look more professional, right? Um, but uh, I mean, I still could grow like a solid beard, like in the off season in mm-hmm, college. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I got here, I thought I can like continue to grow it out. But then my uh, my wife Melanie, uh, she was like, "No, 
No. She said no. no. Yeah. She shot it down. She shut it down. I think it was for the better. Uh, no, I think it man. was for the better. I kind of want to see Davis with a beard. Just kind of yeah. full grown. Yeah. Little, little. I miss your beard. You're, you had a nice beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a sensitive subject. <laughs> I think I, I've, I've, had, I've had mixed reactions to the clean cut. It's either um, people coming up to me like, what happened to the beard? Or like, oh, you look so clean and professional. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. it's... It's 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 a catch twenty two when it comes to me, but I will say one of my more regrettable looks, and I'll put this up on the screen when the video comes out. But just for mm. your reference, Davis, I had blonde hair oh, <laughs> in ju my junior year of high school. Um, yes. Some of my teammates on the offensive line, we have these dinners before every game yeah, at yeah. someone's house, and one night we we're just like, oh, I got my buddy was like, oh, we got hair dye. Let's dye our hair for homecoming. Oh, my God. And I was like, and it was really cool. The auntie, um, my auntie who um, was hosting, she was like, I'll do it, but you have to call your parents first. You have to call your mom and make sure yeah. it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And I called my mom like, hey, I, we're thinking of all dyeing our hair. Can, can I do it? And she's like, I don't care. Just make sure it's fine. And that was kind of the result. My, what I was the like, reaction after? A lot of my like friends at school were like, what? did you do <laughs> what happened and it's i have this i have thick black okinawan hair so like yeah, certain yeah. hair dye doesn't necessarily translate well so like it looked almost like orange <laughs> and like a dark gold <laughs> like it didn't look blonde it didn't look bleached it was kind of this kind of looks a little orange right like yeah. a little bronze almost like a bronze yeah, yeah, yeah. bronziness but then yeah, I, I had to just have to live with it until it grew out. Yeah. So I think towards the end of my junior year, I had like gold tips just from <laughs> letting it grow out. But that was one of my more regrettable ones. But then the one that I do miss the most is funny because you brought up your college time, how you guys kind of had to keep it clean cut. Yeah, yeah. And, and kind of, you know, to the books and, and, and nice and, and neat. I went wild. So really? when I went to college, like I was saying, I trusted only one person to cut my hair. When I wasn't out there, I was like, eh, I'm just going to let it grow. Okay. Boy, it got to my shoulder blades. So I had the long hair look. It looked really wow. cool coming out of the helmet, let me tell you. And, I will, again, I said I'll put it up on the screen for you guys to enjoy. But for Davis's reference, wow. it, was, it was a look, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> it was a look. It was long hair, don't care, and the vibes were immaculate. But obviously, long when, hair, don't care. But when that is solid, I like that look. I'm I do miss my long hair a little bit. I miss being able to put it up. It, <laughs> I I will say I give I give all the girls in this office and just girls in general credit for long hair. Yeah, it's so much work. So much to take care it's of. It's so right? much maintenance. You have to fully dry your hair, you mm -hmm. know, after you get out of the shower. Otherwise, it just gets all over your like the back yeah, of your yeah, shirt yeah. or like on your pillow if you lay down. And especially in Iowa when it's cold, you walk yeah. outside with wet hair, it gets frozen. <laughs> it's such a it's it's it was so much hassle that I just decided to cut it off. Um, so yeah, let me let me ask you that really fast. The day you cut it off, how did it feel? My head felt so light, <laughs> 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 and like the slightest breeze. It was like I was cold. I was so cold, <laughs> and like it was just getting to the not point. Not used to not having, yeah, a, you know, little the mop, little something to yeah. block. Yeah, it, it it got to the point where it was just getting really unruly, and I didn't really want to keep it anymore. And I was starting to do more stuff with my college um, news outlet. It's Man, a good look, Kyle. I do Looking miss the fresh. long hair. I miss the long hair. Those good old days. What do you think, C? That was a good talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man we do miss our third we really host do. we really do but i hope she's enjoying yep. her much needed getaway um and so with too. that it's time for us to get, get away, away. <laughs> <laughs> oh the boys my, the boys this is what happens when the boys are in the room feel we get, get a little lightheaded the air gets <laughs> yeah. a little lightheaded we start giggling a lot yeah, more I know. But again, thank you so much for watching or listening this 
for uh, to this installment of H and N Overtime. To listen to any of our previous episodes or this one, you can head to Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, where we get the rest of our H and N podcasts. And be sure to check out the video version just to see our haircuts um, <laughs> on our YouTube channel for Davis Pitner. I'm Kyle Chanan. Thanks so much. Aloha. This podcast is sponsored by Happy Warrior Kava. Be a happy warrior, drink relax, and enjoy the strong and smooth taste of the best-selling kava in the islands. Happy Warrior Kava.